what is going on youtube i am finally back super excited for this uh new chapter in my life and just to be back with you guys uh yes i do have a microphone now i've been you know upgrading on a lot of the technology i have just because i want things to be a little bit smoother and i'm still getting used to this so this is the first time i've ever used the microphone i don't know if it's going to come out extremely good but you know we're going to give it a shot and uh you know just kind of go over what's been going on in my life. So uh, biggest thing is uh, I got back in the car business, I think is the, the biggest change. The last job just didn't pan out, uh, wasn't for me. Uh, I got back in something which, you know, uh, we're actually gonna key in on this video, which is uh, utilizing your strengths or, you know, acting in your strength zone. Uh, and that was me getting back in the car business and getting in a sales position where I know I'm exceptionally great. Um, so that is the the biggest change still out here in austin texas loving every minute of it but i'm excited to be back on social media especially on youtube and uh be a presence now to do what i think is my true calling and, and be a motivational speaker so um what i'm going to do on monday or not mondays wednesdays and sundays since those are my days off is i'm just going to take time i'm going to read a daily devotional from john maxwell's the daily reader i've been reading this book since i was in the car business it was something we did every morning in our sales meeting and i think it brings light into my day and why wouldn't i want to do that for everybody else right you know i feel like i got a great foundation going in my life right now and uh just a couple key things i do every morning uh, to get myself excited and ready for the day mentally as I just tell myself uh, it's going to be a great day and I give thanks to God. You know, um, I, I think that's super important. It's a key thing in my life right now that's helping me go and be super optimistic and ready for anything uh, that might be thrown my way in the day. You know, because in the car business, it is not the easiest job in the world. You get a lot of different things thrown at you at once and you got to be able to think really quickly uh, and perform really well. It's a performance-based industry and it always will be. Uh, but those are two things that I love and it helps me extremely uh, it helps me a lot, you know, and it helps me be extremely focused and excited for my day. Uh, another thing is I got a uh, get shit done list. I got this from Bedros Koulian. Um, I've kind of always had this, but like I just found new meaning to it. I've been listening to Bedros Koulian a lot. Uh, so he's given me inspiration to do something like this as well for you guys. Uh, but it's a get shit done list. And I have, it's pretty routine for me right now in the car business. Every morning I get in there, I get things done that I need to get done right away. I don't do anything else until I do that, right? So it's something that's helping me be more detail oriented, right? It's helping me uh, be more optimal in my position and uh, get things done that I need to get done, right? So that way everybody around me can benefit from what I'm doing. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is uh, um you know what was i gonna say get your done list read yeah oh yeah sorry <laughs> i've been re uh so since i'm with a new group we don't we have new different uh you know meetings and things like that so they don't know or they don't have the same processes as, as like what we did in our sales meeting so they don't read the daily reader at my dealership now but i've taken it upon myself to go ahead and read it myself so when i'm done doing everything i need to do on my get shit done list i read a daily devotional out of john maxwell's the daily reader helps me get even more focused and motivated for my day right because i've been reading this for you know a few years now um and every time i read one it's, i get a new meaning out of it it's the same book right you just read it year over year every day it's one page some of them are longer some of them are shorter excuse me uh, but they they're great I, I think they helped me and the days I always felt like I was having the toughest time back in Atlanta I would read something like we would read something out of this book and I would get the most meaning out of it like I felt like it just hit home and it made the most sense and it made the most impact on my day so that way I could be successful right and I, that's something I want to do every single Wednesday and Sunday and bring this to you guys plus I'll give you some updates on what I'm doing fitness wise uh, you know business wise so that way I can keep you guys updated on my life uh, because I got a lot of shit going on and I'm super excited about it. But um, uh, the other thing I've been doing is I am, people think I'm intermittent fasting. I'm not. I just choose to wait until I eat my first meal until I feel like I fucking earned it, right? Uh, I think somebody told me they listened to it on Andrew Tate. I listened to it on a podcast. I can't remember if it was Andrew Tate or somebody else, but it spoke volumes to me, right? Making sure I earn that first meal. If that that could mean like getting my get shit done list and everything I need to in the morning, right? Or going to work out early in the morning. If I go work out at five o'clock in the or wake up at five o'clock in the morning, and go work out before work. 
that warrants me to be able to eat my meal when I get to work and, you know, get through that. But there's just certain things I'm doing to try to make myself 1% better. And I want to create a brand for myself that helps other people get 1% better, right? Because everybody's got challenges. Everybody goes through obstacles. Everybody goes through something in their life where they think somebody's like the world's out to get them. But I promise you, if you just start listening to these videos, it will help you become 1% better in all areas of your life. I think the biggest thing in life right now that will start you on this journey to become 1% better is just take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. If you start to do this, your journey will start to pre pr uh, propel you forward uh, mentally, spiritually, financially, whatever you're looking for. Take responsibility and understand that you have control over everything that happens in your life. And the things that you cannot control, don't fucking stress about it. Who gives a fuck? Because you can't control it. So the things you can control, take control. Be the best you you can possibly be and control what you can control and everything else is just outside noise and bullshit. So let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead. So here's how this is going to work. First, I'm going to go ahead and read the read. Like I said, they're not long, so don't think this is going to feel like I'm reading you a fucking bedtime story. It's just a short devotional every single day. And uh, I'll post the link in the description for the book. I hope you guys will buy it and read along so that way on Wednesdays and Sundays you already know what to look forward to on the read. Or if you've already read it and you just want to listen to me rant about shit, I, you know, appreciate it. Um, but, you know, it, I, I think it's a great book. I think it's worth it. I just bought it recently in Barnes & Noble and uh, I, I could be more happy with the decision I made to buy this book. But let's get into it. So today is April the 26th. So the, de the devotional today is develop the talent you have, not the one you want. Okay, so in this one it says, one thing I teach people at my conferences is to stop working on their weaknesses and start working on their strengths. By this I mean abilities, not attitude or character issues which must be addressed. It has been my observation that people can increase their ability in an area by only two points on a scale of one to 10. For example, if your natural talent is an area in an area is a four, with hard work you may rise to a six. In other words, you can go from little below average to little above average. But let's say you find a place where you're a seven. You have the potential to become a nine, maybe even a 10, if it's your greatest area of strength and you work exceptionally hard. That helps you advance from one in 10,000 talent to one in 100,000 talent. But only if you do the other things needed to maximize your talent. Talent is never enough. Find your strengths and start working in them. I think this is a great read. Like I said, the, the biggest change in my life was getting back into something that was my strength zone, right? Was getting back in the car business. We got to focus on the things we're already great at because that's going to that's gonna help us propel our lives forward a lot quicker, right? The things we're already great at, whether like it's sports, fitness, business, spiritual i i don't care focus on the things that you are fucking amazing at that you know that you're having an exceptional talent at right and you know there's an old saying though like like uh with, with this i mean like like it says at the end talent is never enough and that's a fucking true fact i used to listen to this from my brother-in-law all the time is hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work and it's the truest fucking thing i've ever heard in my life and it excites me every time i hear that and with my sales guys on, uh, at the dealership, I try to tell them that all the time. Focus on what you're extremely good at. When I was on the sales floor, my strength zone was product knowledge. There wasn't one person on the sales floor in the dealership that knew more about cars than me. That was my strength zone. You could have been, you could be, if you're in sales, the most enthusiastic person, getting people excited about what they're buying. That wasn't me. My strength zone was knowing everything inside and out about what I'm selling, and that was how I gained my customer's trust. Think about this in any other area that you possibly have, right? If if you know that you are already, let's say fitness-wise, if you already look like an aesthetic Greek god, but you're not exceptionally strong, what the fuck does it matter if you want to go deadlift 500 pounds if you already look good, right? Why not just keep keying on the thing you're already good at? I, you can be strong, you can get strong, but like he says, maybe on a two-point difference can you get there. But in aesthetics, if you're already a seven and you could become a nine, maybe even a ten, 
right? Why wouldn't you just key in on that? But I think logically people don't think about it that way. They want, they think like, oh, I have to key in on the things that I'm just fucking terrible at so I can be more well-rounded. But it's, it's just anything in life. Like think about what the key of business is, which is specialization at the end of the day, right? If we work a pizza shop and I'm really good at pouring sauce on pizzas and you're really good at pouring cheese on pizzas. Why the fuck are we going to switch roles? It doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to put cheese on pizza because I know I'm quicker and more efficient with the sauce than I am the cheese. It's just specialization. That's all it's talking about. Become your strength zone. Work Always work in your strength zone so that way you can propel your life forward. Become 1% better. This is what this shit's for. And I can't stress enough how excited I am to start finally fucking doing this because I feel like my strength zone in social media influence is going to be my way to motivate people. I feel like I have an exceptionally uh, good way of speaking to people that gets them motivated. But it, I didn't even know this, right? I used to just listen to guys like Eric Thomas, right? Um, I used to listen to people like Bader Skoulian, Ed Milet, Andy Frisella, all these fucking guys that used to just speak, speak, and speak. And I'm like, fuck, I want to do that shit. I feel like I could be great at it. But I didn't know. So you know what I started doing? I started practicing. I started practicing with people at work. And especially at my job now, because like I have a lot of guys that maybe uh, don't know what their strength zones are, and I help them get there, right? And I help them become the best person they could possibly be. So if I know I can do this with people at my job, why the hell would I not want to do this with other people around the world, right? That's the whole point about social media influencing is how much influence can I pass along to the next person? But that also means what kind of influence are you passing to other people, right? Because there's good influence and then there's fucking bad influence. I want to be the good influence. I want to help you guys, right? And I'm excited, dude. I love this shit. Like, you can see the smile on my face and how excited I am about this. I mean, just that, right? Reading that book, it makes the biggest difference in my day. And it, it's such a small thing. Such a small thing. But if, if this is something that can help you guys get better, why the fuck would I not want to do this shit? I love it. And and that's that's my strength zone. That's why I know that I'm going to be great at this. I have a passion for this. I know that I'm going to be ex- uh, exceptionally great at it because it's something I feel like I'm already, I am have a talent at, but I'm going to work hard to become even better. This is the first video like this that I've done, and it's only going to get better, and I'm super excited to bring you guys along with this journey. You know, I just want to help you guys. That's my biggest thing. My goal in life is to help you guys. You know, I, I still want to maybe do a fitness video here and there. Uh, I, I think that's cool, but like, you know, I, I just want to figure out how I can be the best public speaker, motivator, influencer in that space while also still being a fucking maniac in the gym, while also still being very disciplined with my regimens on like food and things like that, um, you know, and, and do all these things, right? Like the first step was like 75 hard, right? The next step was, you know, figuring out you know, where I wanted to live. And like my life is finally getting into this motion to where like I feel like I'm catching a lot of traction and it's moving quicker and quicker and things are coming at me in in direction or in different directions, but it's pulling me in the right direction, right? Like I said, I have a lot of fucking shit going on, right? Like, Like things I used to feel like I never had time for in Atlanta, I'm finding fucking time here. And I don't know why I never listened to certain people in my life, like my brother in law, who's like my dad, and I love this guy to death. He's my biggest motivator in life. And I couldn't thank him enough, right? But, like, I don't know, like, what it is about um, me being on my own. Uh, but I will tell you, I did listen to something. And it's like, God isolates you sometimes because he wants to show you how strong you truly are. And you might feel lonely in the moment of it. But he's doing this to show you what your potential really is. And he only puts you in places that he knows it's going to help you grow. Like I feel like God pulled me away from Atlanta, put me here, right? Made me go through some things that maybe weren't the fucking, you know, easiest things to go through, right? But at the end of the day, I feel like it was still the right choice. I still feel like he's got my back. And he's showing me every single day that I'm worthy. I have a path. I have a vision, he has a vision for me, and that I'm gonna fucking get there. I feel like it was my God, like, I I feel as if it's our God-given duty to serve our people in our community. 
And the way I want to serve my people in my community is motivating them, is helping them get 1% better. And, and I feel like that's my calling in life, right? And, and, and I love everything else that I do. I love the car business. I love, you know, I love this. I love, you know, the, the real estate stuff I'm doing. Finally trying to get that shit on roll, on a roll, you know, I was calling a little bit today, you know, uh, so, you know, my career right now in the car business, I, I want to grow this as a business. I want to, you know, get my real estate game going and I want to show people during the process that it's fucking possible, right? That you can do anything you want to fucking do if you just buckle down and figure it the fuck out. Have a vision, have the mission in your attack list every single day that you got to get done. Take extreme, I feel like I'm just reading off book names, but you know, uh, uh, take extreme ownership over your life, right? And everything you do, take responsibility in everything you fucking do in your life, and it will get better. It will get better. I remember a long time ago, my one of my football coaches told me, hey, if you just start taking responsibility for everything you do in your life, I promise you, your life will get better. And I didn't know what the fuck he meant at that time because I was probably in high school and I was like, yeah, shut up. Like, you, I know more than you, teenager type shit. But there came a point in my life where I started doing it. Um, and it helped me because I used to be an angry fucking little kid. I used to be angry. I used to be immature, you know, mad at the world. You know, I thought, you know, the world was out to get me. I couldn't win. But when I started taking responsibility for everything in my life and started putting myself around different people, it made my life change. And your life can change. And if you allow it to change, it will change. If you just understand that there's so much more for your life right now, man, I mean, you can grab it all. You can have whatever you want, live the life you, you choose. And, and and I'm not saying you have to live the life that I want to live or anything like that. I'm not trying to propel, but I have big goals. I have big aspirations. I have big dreams, right? You know, I love that, that – uh, press conference with Caleb Plant where he talks about, you know, he set out to do unbelievable things, live an unbelievable life while everybody else is living believable lives and doing believable things. Like that's the shit that fires me the fuck up, right? Against all odds, still working hard, even though, you know, the guy was going against one of the greatest boxers of our era, guy was just speaking truth. And for me, man, There couldn't be a more exciting time in my life than right fucking now. And I'm super excited, and I'm glad I get to bring you guys along with me. And uh, that's that's all I got, man. So I appreciate it. This is uh, hopefully going to grow into a podcast one day. Hopefully I can uh, get a bigger space. My my little ass apartment, I don't got the most space in the world. But we're making it work. So uh, super excited. Thank you guys so much. Love you all. Get 1% better.